I don't know if it was last winter or the winter before because what is time? Bram issue. Oh wait, who's Bram? And then we have a woman named, that sounds terrible. Her home in Vermont, back to Vermont. So this is gonna, this, and there's a killer on the loosed. On the loosed. Loosed is not a word. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. And welcome to another kind of mix of like book recommendations slash books I would like to read. It's like non-TBR, TBR, the winter edition. <laughs> so I kind of feel like I'm tempting fate because I did that whole massive dark academia TBR and I wound up reading, I think maybe one book off of that list. So I feel like I overwhelmed myself. And then of course, like distraction, distraction. I just was like going to like whatever I was in the mood for reading. So I hope I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna like break the bad cycle here and I'm gonna read some of these books, including the first one I'm gonna talk about because I'm actually starting it today. So at least I'll have one of these off the list. So the first book I wanna talk about is The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. So this was kindly sent to me by Christine here on the channel a while ago, and I'm gonna read it this winter because I talked about, I guess it was two years ago, I made a video of like winter books that I recommend and books that I wanna read. And I didn't even know about The Winter People, I think at the time. So I'm reading it now. I'm literally starting it today. You have my word. I'm starting it today. So I do like to go into my thrillers a little bit on the dark side because I do, and I like my thrillers a lot on the dark side, <laughs> but sometimes as we all know, the back gives away a little bit too much, but I'm just gonna give us all a little bit of a taste of this one. So in this one, we are in Vermont, which I feel like is very, typical for Jennifer McMahon because that's where she lives. So I've only read one of her books. I have a couple of them, but I follow her as an author as well. So I love the inside baseball. So here we are in Vermont, as I said, and we have a mystery from 1908 about a woman named Sarah who was found dead in the field behind her house just months after the tragic death of her daughter. And then we have present day 19 year old Ruthie lives in Sarah's farmhouse with her mother, Alice, and her younger sister, Fawn and I'm guessing there's gonna be some weird stuff and Ruthie's gonna get pulled into this historical mystery and that's all I wanna know. So I'm, in, I'm sure it's gonna be amazing and I'm just super jazzed about like the atmosphere of it all, even though we don't have any snow in New York yet, which I'm not mad about, despite the fact that it's December, it's totally fine. I don't need it, it just, you know, it's totally fine, but I'm excited to get into some seasonal wintry vibes. The next book is one that I am committed to reading this winter. So I did this last year. I think the first year I made this video, I talked about Misery by Stephen King and I didn't read it. And last year I made a commitment to read it and I did. So winter, not necessarily December, but winter, <laughs> you guys hold me accountable. I'm gonna read The Snowman by Joe Nesbo. So this is the one that I feel like everybody talks about. I know we are into the Harry Hole series by the time this happens, but I've heard, <laughs> you can start here. It's totally fine. I'm not gonna read the first six books just to lead into this one. I have this one. I feel like it'll give me a good taste of if I like him or not. And the premise of this one really excites me. So if you guys have been here for a little bit, you've heard me talk about it before, but just in case, just in case. So in this one, we have one night after the year's first snowfall, a boy named Jonas wakes up and discovers that his mother has disappeared. Only one trace of her remains, a pink scarf, his Christmas gift to her, now worn by the snowman that inexplicably appeared on their yard earlier that day. So we have Inspector Harry Hull, who suspects a link between the missing woman and a suspicious letter he's received. The case deepens when a pattern emerges. Over the past decade, 11 women have vanished, all on the day of the first snow. But this is a killer who makes his own rules and he'll break his pattern just to keep the game interesting as he draws Harry even closer into his twisted web. So I just have heard so many amazing things about this book and that it's creepy and it's so well done and again seasonal and it's been on my shelf for far too long. So this winter, hold me to it you guys, it's happening, it's all happening. Okay, I'm gonna pivot into a book that I've already read, just so I can feel a little better about myself, Murder on the Orient Express. So Agatha Christie fans, if you haven't read this one yet, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. We get a blend of things that I love, which we get an isolated mystery. It's a Poirot mystery. It's obviously one of her classics. And I have not seen the modern movie. I've seen the old like Albert Finney classic movie, which was well done, but we all know 
the book is always better. So in this one, Poirot is on the Orient Express and it is stopped in the tracks by a snowdrift. One of the passengers winds up murdered and isolated by the storm, Poirot investigates. So it's just absolutely one of her best, I think. And I'm just a huge fan of it and very seasonal. And you know, I love an isolated mystery. So recommendation there. A book that I bought last winter with the intention of reading it. Last winter? Jeez, I'm not even sure. I think it was last winter. Is The Dark. So this is by Emma Houghton. And this says one dead body, 12 suspects, 24 hour darkness. So another isolated thriller, which often goes hand in hand with wintry books. Not always, but often. It's definitely a good device to use in an isolated thriller, like throw in some snow. And there's at least one other book in this pile that's going to have snow be the impact in that way. So this one says in the most inhospitable environment, cut off from the rest of the world, there's a killer on the loose. It's basically all I needed to know. So we have a doctor named Kate North, and she has been knocked out of her orbit by personal tragedy. So when she's offered the opportunity to be an emergency replacement at the UN research station in Antarctica, she jumps at the chance. The previous doctor, Jean-Luc, died in a tragic accident while out on the ice. The move seems an ideal situation for Kate. No one knows about her past. No one is checking up on her. But as total darkness descends for the winter, she begins to suspect that Jean-Luc's death wasn't accidental at all. Mm. So I know a bunch of people were reading this last winter. I'll be honest, I have not looked too deep into reviews or anything because I want to stay in the dark. Not that I meant to say. <laughs> I want to read the dark and stay in the dark and dark, 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 dark. Okay, another book that I plan to read this winter, your girl's got plans, is The Christmas Murder Game by Alexandra Benedict. So I picked this up back in October with the intent of holding on to it for the holiday season. I think it just sounds like great fun. It feels like it has a little bit of a Knives Out vibe to it, which I love. And this one says 12 clues, 12 keys, 12 days of Christmas, but how many will die before 12th night? So in reading just little blurbs about this, I believe we as the reader get to play armchair detective along and it's kind of designed that way which I really, really love. And it has other things that I love, including maps and family trees. And then we have 12 days of anagrams, like we get all the game pieces at the front and it just sounds really fun. So anyway, what's it all about? So we have a woman named Lily and she has to compete with her estranged cousins for 12 days of Christmas. And we've got snow as a, as a device as a vibe in this one. It's Christmas, so not totally unheard of to have snow. So it says the annual Christmas game is afoot at Endgame House, the Armitage's grand family home. And this year's prize is to die for. Deeds to the house itself. But for Lily, she has no intention of returning. She's just not jazzed about her family. Hasn't been back there since her mom died 21 years ago. And she just does not want to have anything to do with this house that completely like haunts her dreams. Not a fan. But her aunt promises her that if she wins, that the game's riddles will give her the keys not only to the house, but to its darkest, se darkest secrets, words, including the identity of her mother's murderer. So there's a carrot dangled in front of her, which is obviously too good to be true. So as we know, Lily winds up going back and says, let the games begin. I think this will be great, great fun. And I'm excited for just like the game factor of it, which I also want to read The Family Game by Katherine Stedman, which I did not grab, did I? I don't know if Snow plays a factor in that one. Hold on. Okay, so The Family Game by Katherine Stedman. I've talked about this a couple times here on the channel when I picked it up. So this one begins in November, and then I think we go into December. I don't know if it takes place over Christmas, or if I'm making that up in my head. So I don't actually know if weather plays a part in this. Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library just finished this and she was absolutely raving about it. And I was also just talking to Amber from Beaches and Books about it. So she wants to read it too. So I really wanna read this one probably on the sooner side. I don't yet know if weather plays a factor in it though. So very similar kind of game vibe. In this one, we have the rules. We have a newly engaged woman who is an heir to an extremely powerful American family. 
And everyone, when I talked about this the first time, I talked about it as like a most anticipated, said it reminded them of that movie Ready or Not, which I didn't know anything about, but I have since done my research. I haven't watched it yet. I want to read this and then watch it. I don't think there's any relation to it other than concept, where we have this super dark and messed up family who I think kind of messes with the, in this case, fiance in the movie, It's the New Bride. And it just sounds like <laughs> games can be deadly. So I don't know if this is weather-ish. So there's an asterisk next to that one. But one that does have weather, because I've read it and I love it, is Shiver by Ellie Reynolds. So I read this earlier this year and I am just obsessed with this book. Like this is already, this was one of those books where as soon as I finished it, I wanted to restart it because I loved it that much. And this is isolated friend reunion. They're in the French Alps. I just wanted to check because it could be French or Swiss Alps because I've read both. I've heard it both ways. <laughs> and we get past and present timelines in this one. So this was a group of friends who were competitive snowboarders. They were all training together 10 years ago. And one of the people in the group mysteriously disappeared. And now in a very, and then there were none style, which uh, Ellie Reynolds herself said that was the inspiration for this. They're all brought back together again to those mountains under the guise of a reunion, but it turns out somebody is out for revenge. So isolated vibes, just such a great cast of characters, so well done. I loved the past and present of it. And Allie Reynolds, Allie Reynolds I don't know why I can't talk today. Ellie Reynolds herself was a competitive snowboarder. So I am not, I've skied once in my life. Like I legit know nothing about this world. And I was so immersed in it and so fascinated by it. And it, it fe like you feel like you're the snowboarder. You feel like you're the one on the board. You feel like you're the one falling. You feel like you're the one taking like the major um, flips and turns and like all the incredible things that they do. And I feel like I have such an appreciation for how dangerous the sport is, for just the training and what goes into it. And I loved it. And on top of that, it's just like an absolutely amazing thriller mystery. So hugely recommend this one. So another book that I have on my list to dive into is The Dead Season by Tessa Wiegert. So this is book number two in the Shayna Merchant series. So if you guys have already started the series, this one involves snow. And if you haven't started it yet, Death in the Family is really good. That's the first one that has a weather nor'easter um, weather. <laughs> That is a nor'easter as the weather trope in that, and that's an isolated on an island mystery. So in this one, and this does not spoil anything from book number one, this is just a quick premise. So when the decades-old skeleton of Shayna's estranged uncle is uncovered, she returns home to Vermont to solve the cold case. And it says she's interviewing family members, she's interviewing her community, there's secrets, there's a lot of questions going on, and she kind of has you know, very vague memories from her childhood and is beginning to realize like how much she doesn't know about her own childhood. So she has to wade into her murky past to unravel another mystery. So I'm a huge fan of Shayna. Book number four in this series just came out, so I have some catching up to do. And what better time than now to catch up with a wintry read. So I really liked her. She used to be an NYPD detective. And when the first book opens, she has returned or she's moved to upstate New York with her fiance to get away from New York City. And of course, bad things happen everywhere. So here we go. She's going to go to Vermont for some more bad stuff. And then a book that I mentioned in another video, which I don't know if you guys have seen by now, but spoiler alert, I talked about The Girl in the Ice by Robert Brinsda. I feel like I'm always saying his name wrong. So I talked about it in a, I did a, if I've done it, I'll link it in all the places, uh, books that were on one of my carts. So I haven't actually read this one yet, but I did just pick up Nine Elms, which is the first book in his Kate Marshall series. And this is his first book in the Erica Foster series. So I've heard some great things about this. I picked this up like end of last year, beginning of this year. I think it was another one of those books where I was like, all the winter things and I didn't read it. But this one is a gripping serial killer thriller. All right, all I need to know. So this one says, her eyes are wide open, her lips parted as if to speak, her dead body frozen in the ice. She's not the only one. When a young boy discovers the body of a woman beneath a thick sheet of ice in a South London park, Detective Erica Foster is, ca is called in to lead the murder investigation. The victim is a beautiful young socialite and she appeared to have the perfect life. We know that's never the case then. Yet when Erica begins to dig deeper, she starts to connect the dots between the murder and the killings of three prostitutes all found strangled, hands bound and dumped in water around London. What dark secrets is the girl in the ice hiding? 
I don't know how many books there are in this series at this stage of the game, but I've heard great things about his writing and I love me a series. And I mentioned this in one of my recent videos. <laughs> really? Might've been a book haul. I think because I started to reread the Patricia Cornwall series, wait for it, I have just gotten so excited about series because I love seeing the evolution of our characters and I love being on that journey with them. And for me, and I feel like this really started in October and really kind of locked in again in November, the comfort of a familiar place and familiar characters is just sort of like that warm comfort food for me. And I just, I just love a series. Like to me, it's just sort of like, like a TV series. Like you get to be with these characters for a really long time versus not that it's a bad thing, but like, um, so it's like TV series, movie. They're both really great, but sometimes I just want to revisit characters. So I'm excited to start this series. And then I'm going to do something I never do or like next to never do. I'm going to recommend that if you haven't started the Patricia Cornwell series, that maybe you start with From Potter's Field, which is book five in the series, I wanna say. Let me check. Let me fact check myself. Book number six in the series. This is really where we start to get a thread of past cases impacting current conditions or current situations. So we have a character in this book who appeared in an earlier book, but I think we get enough context to understand it. So if you guys want to start at the beginning, I will never tell you no. I will never say don't start at the beginning, but this was a really well done book. And we are Christmas Eve, New York Central Park, a dead body is found at the fountain and it launches this mystery, obviously. So we have all the snowy vibes and we have Kay and the police detective Pete Marino and our FBI investigator profiler, he's a profiler, Benton Wesley, coming together to solve this murder. And it is connected to something that happened in Virginia and they are all drawn to New York City into this case. So I just feel like it it's a great point in the story where you're early enough in, 26 books are out right now, and you're early enough in the series where you get to know these characters, but you're not like so deep in that I feel like not all the dots connect in a way. So I just really enjoyed this one. And I feel like it's a great like representation of these characters. And we get to know them, like I said, we're still early enough in, and I feel like there's enough explanation of what's happened in previous ones to give you guys the context that you would need. And I just, it was a really good story. Then it was a really good investigation and it was a really good murder. So if you thought about dipping into Patricia Cornwall or you want to give her a go, maybe try this one. And you can obviously always go backwards and connect other dots if you feel like it, or you can read this as a one and done, but I really enjoyed this one. And again, snow. <laughs> okay, a book that I have talked about reading so many times, like I'm also going to say it, hold me to it. Even if I only make it one chapter in, Stags by M.A. Bennett. So this is a book that I bought forever ago. And I don't know if it was compared to, I'm trying to think of like what teen drama or TV show it was compared to that I was like, I'm totally in. And I've just never read it. I started, I feel like the first couple pages of it a couple of years ago, and I just wasn't in the mood. So this one is One Deadly Weekend. And we have a group of kids who go to this prestigious St. Aidan the Great School, which the acronym for that is STAGS. So we have like the super fancy admired circle of friends known as the Medievals, and they wind up inviting our odd girl out, Greer, for a surprise weekend away. And she's not quite sure why she's invited to this. And I think it's like she's not quite sure what's going on when she gets there. But it says, as the weekend begins to take shape, it becomes apparent that beyond the luxurious trappings, predators are lurking and they're out for blood. So this one tells us that it is a gripping psychological survival adventure with complex characters, a keen sense of place, past and present, and a breakneck pace, which will fascinate and shock readers as revelations lead to an unimaginable truth. I need to finally give this book a go or I need to let it go because it's been on my shelf forever. And I'm just, I love me, like I said, like an isolated feeling and an isolated thriller and snow is involved and I just, I love any kind of dark and messed up friend group, whether they're adults or YA. So that's what this, this is YA, if I hadn't made that clear. Um, so I need to, again, 
hold me to it this winter. Okay, and then I'm going to end with some more recommendations of books that I've read. So the first one I have is The Ice Beneath Us by Camilla Greb. And I read this earlier this year and really enjoyed it. So I went down a pretty deep Nordic noir obsession. I feel like again, like end of last year. So I read the first, this isn't it, but we're going to talk about Ragnar Jonasson. Wouldn't be a snowy video without him. So I started his Hidden Iceland series and I really enjoyed it. And I kind of just switch flipped. I wanted to get more into it. Some of this was inspired by Abby from Crime by the Book. But this is the first in a series, but again, you can read this as a one and done. So, and I have only read this one, so no pressure to like read beyond this if you don't want to, but it's a like fully closed out mystery, I guess we could say. So in this one, it says, winter's chill has descended on Stockholm as police arrive at the scene of a shocking murder. An unidentified woman lies beheaded in a posh suburban home, a brutal crime made all the more disturbing by its uncanny resemblance to an unsolved killing 10 years earlier. But this time there's a suspect, the charismatic and controversial chain store CEO, Jesper Orr, who owns the home but is nowhere to be found. So in this book, we get multiple points of view, we get multiple timelines. We have the 10 year old murder, we have the current case. This book is so, wonderfully dark and atmospheric it is a slower burn of a book it is very character heavy but in a great way i think like in a ton of french kind of a way so we get solid police investigation throughout but we also get great insight and understanding of these characters and their connections and their relationships and how what happened 10 years ago has impacted them in present which i love and i thought it was really really great and there were just some great lines in this I hesitate to say any of them because I don't remember what they may or may not give away, but it was just a really, I feel like fascinating story. And again, it was more than I had expected. And one of our characters, let me see if we're supposed to know this out of the gate or if it doesn't happen till later. Okay, no, we don't find this out about this person until later on. So anyway, there's some really great characters in this one. And again, I love the connections of past and present and seeing people who worked together on a case 10 years ago coming together now. And I just thought it was really, really well done. So totally recommend this one. And then another book that I love, and I feel like this is divisive with a lot of people, but it's In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. So this is her debut. This is the first of her books that I read. And I have to say, I feel like it's still my favorite. I haven't read it in forever and I want to reread it. I have yet to read The It Girl. I still have it. You guys can't see it. I want to read it, but that was part of my dark academia. <laughs> Jinxed myself, knocking on my wood floor. And to date, I would say I feel like this is my favorite and I might have sentimental attachment because it was the first. But in this one, we have a hen party and they go to this fun-filled weekend away in the English countryside and <laughs> we know it's not going to be fun. So it says, sometimes the only thing to fear is yourself. So we meet our main character, Nora, in the present day. She is waking up in a hospital room. She has very, very vague memories of what happened over the course of this weekend. She is in pain. She is confused. She is injured. And she is not wondering what happened. She is wondering, what have I done? So we wind up getting sort of over the course of this 48 hour weekend, we get the past and present timelines. And of course, with any good friend group who's doing a weekend away, these were friends from kind of like back in the day. And Nora sort of like was on the odds or kind of like on the outs with some of the people, but she winds up getting invited anyway to this hen party. And she goes reluctantly because the mutual friend between her and the bride is like, you have to come. We've got to like put all this stuff in the past it's a good thing you got to come this weekend. Um, and maybe, <laughs> maybe not such a good thing that she went, but I loved it. And it's like short and quick and their snow is part of the, the vibe of it all. So obviously that's why we're here. And then two other books that I talked about recently that I loved is Hello Transcriber and The Widowmaker by Hannah Morrissey. So these are both in the Black Harbor series, but you can read them in either order. Hello Transcriber came out first, Widowmaker just came out now, and we are in this town, Black Harbor, and it is just cold and desolate and icy, and you can like feel the chill, you can feel the darkness. They are so well done. 
they use the town they Hannah Morrissey uses the town as the anchor so we have our main character Hazel who is the police transcriber in book number one winds up working with a detective on a case that comes up and then in book number two we have a different detective we are working with and a different non-police person so it's Morgan she's a photographer and there is some overlay with the character so like if you read this you won't quite know but then you go back and read this and then you'll see the overlay and if you read them in the order they were published you'll see it but they both function as standalones you can read them like I said you can read them in either order so if you want to read about our transcriber who is pulled into this case because in chapter number two we find out her neighbor winds up confessing to throwing a dead body in the dumpster which is the dead body that they find in chapter number one and he confesses to being the one who does it which launches this investigation and it's also like you just never know what's living next door to you totally dark and messed up loved it and then in the Widowmaker, we have this super fancy rich family the reynolds who their matriarch clive reynolds disappeared 20 years ago the case was never solved his wife was definitely a top suspect because of life insurance policies and all that jazz and then we have a murder in the present day which provides a lead to the murder from 20 years ago so we get a cold case we get the investigation so in this one we really get kind of like a haves and have nots so the reynolds are super rich morgan basically has like nothing left to her name and their paths wind up intertwining so both of these books definitely have some very dark characters in it i love hannah morrissey's writing her style her words her prose and this one we get multiple povs this is a straight pov so if any of those things impact you guys but both of them are absolutely great you can't go wrong and then my last book, which I legit just finished today, is Snowblind by Ragnar Jonasson. So this is the first book in the Dark Iceland series. So this was his debut novel. That is a six book series, but again, you can read this as a one and done. I say this is the person who just read it today. And you definitely get conclusion to what happened in this book, but you can see because we are following a police detective and the police force, how there could be more books in the series. So full disclosure, I did in my psychotic thrifting wind up getting all six books because I heard such great things about them but I haven't read what happens in book number two yet so I will be continuing in this series. So in this one we are following Ari Thor. He is a rookie policeman. He has left Reykjavik and his girlfriend to take this opportunity in this really small town in northern Iceland and when he gets there it's like nothing happens here. People leave their doors open. It's a super sleepy quiet town. We're in the dead of winter and it's like blizzards and roads cut off and you go snow blind. And sure enough, somebody dies. And Ari Thor is suspecting that maybe there's some foul play involved. And this is one of those towns where everybody knows everybody. Everyone has been there forever. People have been born and bred there. People were born there and left and come back. And there's a very small handful of people who are outsiders and Ari is like the ultimate outsider. So it has very kind of Agatha Christie vibes to it and that we get this full cast of characters, this small town mystery. And then it also reminds me very much of that book, The Appeal by Janice Hallett. And the reminder in that is that in this book, which came, this book was actually written in 2010, there is a amateur dramatic society which is kind of the core of the story and which is how so many people from the town wind up being connected to one another and there was also a play in the appeal and it's how so many different characters in that village wound up being together so the mysteries are completely different the stories are completely different but we have that as a as a way to bring everybody together so one thing i wish this book had which the appeal did have was like a cast of characters at the beginning so we do get maps which i love me a map but it would have been really helpful. So you do get a lot of characters, which I had a little bit of a hard time keeping straight, but I really enjoyed the mystery. I didn't come anywhere close to figuring this one out, but I feel like with an Agatha Christie, which is what this reminds me of, I never figure them out. And Ragnar Jonasson also did translations of Agatha Christie's books into Icelandic. So I feel like there's a Christie sort of style to him in some ways, but this is also very slow burn, very character development-ish. Like I feel like Nordic Noir, that's sort of a standard for it. This is not a particularly violent book. So the 
descriptions of like the beheading of our main character or our main character we have the beheaded woman on page one of this book is a bit more graphic this is not graphic in nature and we sort of get like one image but that's it so if you like want to steer clear so it's not quite cozy but it's not like very dark and messed up if that helps but i really enjoyed it i enjoy his writing it's definitely a much different pace from a typical i would say like us thriller or even like some typical like uk thrillers but i enjoy the slow burn factor i like it as a good balance to some of the other books that i read and i do enjoy his writing so this is great and also if you are interested he has standalones if you're not interested in getting into a series so i haven't read this one yet outside this is another isolated thriller where we have a deadly Icelandic snowstorm, four friends seeking shelter in an abandoned hunting lodge, miles from help and knowing they will die out in the cold. So they break into this little hunting lodge, hoping to wait out the storm until morning, but nothing prepares them for what's inside. Mm -hmm. So of course, this is another one that I'm like, I wanna read it this winter. So maybe I will, but if you're looking for a standalone, he also has this book, which came out last year. So. We're not lacking for choices, right? We're not lacking for choices of books to read this winter. So on that note, I feel like I have pulled together <laughs> some good books to tempt me. But I'm sure I will make more of these videos over the course of the winter. I do love the hibernation factor. I do love the isolation factor. And then I'm hoping that maybe outside of this stack of books, I will pick up some other books and be surprised to find out whether it does play a factor. So the cover of this makes it look like it's not winter. I don't know if anybody knows. You can just let me, well, I'm going to read it either way, but feel free to let me know either way if, if weather plays a part in this in case anybody else is interested. But I just, I just love... Love me a cold, icy, isolated, wintry thriller. I don't know. I'm just in the mood for it. I'm just in the mood for it. My camera just cut me off because my memory card was full. It's been a minute since that happened. Usually the battery dies before the memory card fills up. But <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for being here today and hanging out. And let me know, like I say, other recommendations you guys would have for wintry ones anything i haven't read if you would maybe recommend pushing it to the front of the list i feel like i say this all the time but i always want to know i want to know what you guys think and you guys generously tell me what you think which i really appreciate all right i'm gonna go i will see you guys in another video really soon take care everybody bye